First of all, uh, welcome everybody. I see, uh, I see a lot of familiar faces. It's my honor to uh, uh, start this uh, workshop. And before going into uh, the next slides, I would just want to remind you on this uh, pre-workshop survey. If you haven't done it yet, please do. It will come back uh, in, the, in the break. We will put it forward so you can easily uh, uh, click um, on the, how is it called? The scatter uh, diagram. We will start uh, a, a two-day workshop um, at this moment on the intersectoral preparedness and response planning essentials. Uh, my name is uh, Corinne Swan. I'm a um, medical doctor specialized in infectious disease control and um, have been here actually in 2020, January, in the same room with uh, my colleague Sandra uh, for one of the first uh, meetings of uh, SHARP. And uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, over three years later, to have such a workshop dedicated on the outcomes of uh, Work Packet 6. So the main theme of this workshop is to integrate the latest insights that have been developed by Work Packet 6 in the all-hazard uh, preparedness and response planning. And um, it's a pleasure uh, to um, host this um, workshop from the RUVM as the lead of work package seats and uh, the co-lead, the institution, the Salud Carlo III Iski in Spain, to take you along before we go uh, to uh, uh, the opening of the workshop. I will put preparedness a bit in perspective. The um, sharp aim overall is meant to strengthen EU countries in their preparedness and response planning uh, based on the, at that moment when it started decision 1082. And um, you may know that this uh, decision uh, last December has been changed into a new regulation to 1022 but basically entitles, uh, I think, still a lot uh, about preparedness and response. And I think it, it's meant even to to bring countries even further in their preparedness and response planning. So regarding Work Packet 6, uh, our responsibility was to develop uh, operational intersectoral preparedness and response plan as part of this preparedness and response. As a starting, as an outline, we will talk about a lot about preparedness and response uh, the coming one and a half day, but um, what do we actually prepare for? What is our yeah, what is our framework? And um, from the REVM, we have for that always a kind of short list. What, is, what are the main scenarios that we have in mind? And uh, of course, in, within the all hazard approach, infectious diseases is one of the main themes. And we focus on two main scenarios. One is, like we all know now from the COVID-19, this is an, an outbreak, a pandemic with many, many cases in which maybe the disease itself might not be that uh, having um, high morbidity, mortality, but because of the high number of cases, it needs a lot of preparedness uh, because I have put the pictures uh, um, above, black and white from the um, Spanish flu in 1918 and uh, the response in Wuhan in uh, 2020. So this is an... an, an, an an, an area that needs uh, an, uh, an, a huge investment in the, in the preparedness that, of course, due to COVID, we have, have given a, a complete new impulse. The second scenario that we uh, uh, prepare for, which needs also a lot of uh, preparation, this is for diseases which are maybe small in number and, um, and import cases, but because of the high impact, because of the seriousness of a disease, of the highly contagiousness of it, uh, or sometimes, uh, for instance, with a viral hemorrhagic fever, it can also lead to a lot of anxiousness uh, among uh, the public, but also among healthcare workers. And we've experienced that this scenario, for maybe one patient uh, uh, within a couple of years, still uh, needs a lot of specific uh, preparedness, also intersectoral. The next uh, scenario is the all hazard approach, which entitles uh, the biochemical and radionuclear disasters, which with the new IHR has been brought under the one umbrella, well, that's the IHR of 2005, actually. 
And also within the EU regulation, this is uh, the all hazard approach and uh, within SHARP, another work package will spend more attention to that. And another um, scenario, lastly, I will bring under your um, notice is I see as a bit as a shift in our uh, preparedness that um, the COVID-19 has put more emphasis on the, as we call, epidemic forecasting to monitor and to have um, insight in pandemics, how they might develop. And um, that leads to further preparedness regarding all different sectors who do research, who do monitoring, to be aware what is what is in the pipeline, which what, what might come up, and currently the highly pathogenic avian influenza is an example of that, um, for which uh, also in the Netherlands we have a lot of uh, preparedness and response activities going on, and what we see is that um, we more and more do um, monitoring uh, on um, developments that might suggest or that might be a predictor for um, a spillover from the animal group uh, into the, the human uh, group. Then the next uh, question is, how do we prepare? And for that, we in the Netherlands uh, uh, follow uh, together with the ECDC, the um, public health emergency preparedness cycle that has been uh, published um, in uh, 2020 uh, by our co colleague Evelyn Bovro to give an overview on what domains are, are involved uh, in preparedness and response. And we basically have, um, have them in the chronological uh, way of thinking that you need things pre-event as the basis like governance, law, uh, guidelines, then if an event might event might occur, you need surveillance, you need risk assessment, you need re response, and then you end up with evaluations and improvement of the system. And this is according the, the plan to check act cycle that uh, many of you, you might be uh, familiar with uh, from the management um, uh, studies. Um, so, um, this is what we always uh, try to fulfill. And when we started with SHARP in 2019, we were uh, just uh, finishing the evaluations after the Ebola enhanced preparedness due to the epidemic in 2014, 2015. So this was a scenario of what I just called not low number of cases, but a huge impact. And um, we have... We just finished a an, an study on the, the cooperation between the public health and the curative sector. But we also learned from the Ebola how many other sectors were involved. Um, of course, uh, next to the curative sector, we also had a lot to do with uh, security policy uh, because if there was a possible case, uh, people get uh, very frightened. Well, it's a bit uh, over phrased by me, but there was there was necessary for sometimes for, for regulating home isolation and those kinds of things. Um, there was a lot to do with the immigration sector of people from Africa who were in this immigration process, which was an over, yeah, an over anxiety whether they might have uh, Ebola. We had a lot to do with uh, points of entry airports, also port ships coming from Western Africa going to Rotterdam where um, people wanted to be really sure that they were prepared for a potential case. And what I, lastly, we also uh, were, um, had to work together with the army when there was um, repatriation of Dutch colleagues in uh, Western Africa and even medical uh, evacuation of someone uh, working with the UN. So all these, um, uh, the big lesson from the Ebola was that all those different sectors, they also have their own preparedness plan. So we have our nice cycle, um, we call the public health emergency preparedness cycle. And there are connections uh, with all those other sectors who have their own cycle and their own preparedness plans. So we were very motivated uh, within the SHARP Work Package 6 to, to bring this further. 
next to that, it is not only, I think, a necessity that we see as professionals, it's also in our international uh, standards um, from the international health regulations from the WHO and the newest EU regulation I just mentioned, where um, regarding the, the capacities that a country needs to, yeah, to, um, to be available, to be well prepared, that they are, um, that they are involved, for instance, in uh, the the yearly state party report, it's a specific capacity for um, uh, for the HR to have this um, multi-sectoral uh, coordination mechanism. And within the new uh, EU regulations, they are at this moment uh, working on a um, survey. You might be involved in that or asked to give uh, input. Um, they are busy with an, a draft questionnaire for an, uh, for an assessment that every EU member state needs to uh, to uh, fill in uh, every three years. And um, it is uh, too small to read. You can read it later in the PowerPoint, but also in this questionnaire, there is specific attention for this multi-sectoral cooperation and preparation. Okay, so having all heard this and, and uh, knowing this, I come to the aim of the workshop of this uh, today and tomorrow. One of them one of the main themes will be that we will share with you the main outcomes of Work Package 6, amongst others, the results of a literature review, what is multi-sectoral collaboration, which sectors are involved, what is the right timing, like to have a common understanding of the basics about multi-sectoral collaboration. Then we move to uh, specific information and uh, goal knowledge gained about laboratory preparedness. So the role of diagnostics experts in public health emergency preparedness and response and the testing strategies during SARS coronavirus. And I need to elaborate a bit on that because the coronavirus uh, on one hand has had a lot of implication in the SHARP work package six. I think also uh, among other uh, work packages, uh, I think Uti, you, uh, you uh, will be uh, familiar with that. But on the other hand, it also gave us a chance to see in a real-time uh, pandemic, to see how intersectoral collaboration works. And I'm uh, very proud that uh, my colleagues were flexible uh, to change and adjust uh, studies and uh, to spend specific attention to this diagnostics experiences. Then we will end with presentations on the public engagement and the citizens' role in the public health emergency preparedness. Then uh, today we will end with two presentations from countries um, uh, about multi-sectoral collaboration in Netherlands in, uh, and in Latvia. Tomorrow morning we first will continue with outcomes of the work package, uh, which sectors should be involved and uh, the literature review on lessons learned during a recent threat from our Spanish colleagues. But then, ba then we want basically to spend much time as possible in group discussions for you to transfer all the information and, and the knowledge that is gained uh, in this work package six to your own situation. And in your country, in your position, what does multi-sectoral collaboration mean? And we try to help you with that in, in, um, in three discussions in which we focus on what are the ideal dimensions. We will come back tomorrow on that. What is necessary to reach that? And what would be your concrete steps in your country? So knowing that that would be the ideal outcome of this workshop, I would like to invite you to already listen to the presentations with this in mind. What would it be? What would this mean for my country? So, to and then tomorrow in the group discussions that will help you to bring you further. Well, this is uh, the agenda you probably all have seen already. We have um, this afternoon we focus mainly on presentations, and um, I will take care that there will be enough coffee breaks. Uh, we will come back to some logistic uh, things later and um, we will close the day with a dinner and tomorrow morning we start at nine o'clock again. Before we continue with the, the program, I want to uh, thank very much the organizers uh, of this workshop here in Latvia because uh, it has been extremely helpful for us to, uh, to uh, present the outcomes of our, um, our uh, 
for our work package. And um, here are the names of um, the uh, of the the group that is involved in the in the in the Sharp Six work package. So uh, before we we go um, to um, an introduction around, we have a, a change, a little change of plan. I first want to introduce uh, Aiga Balora. Then I give the floor to Indra for a group picture and for introduction round. So. But first, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Mrs. Aiga Baloda. Uh, she's the Deputy State Directory of the Ministry of Health of the Republic of Latvia. And you have extensive experience in the state governance. Uh, her background is with a Master on Political Science and Governments, which, <laughs> which you enriched with the MBA in 2021. And uh, your specific focus is on digitalization and change management issues, which I think is very uh, valuable for preparedness. And it is an honor for me to give the floor to Mrs. Aiga Baloda for official opening of the workshop. Thank you very much. And thank you for the very warm welcome. And I'm sorry it's raining outside, but actually spring is coming. And I think for you, this meeting is like a fresh spring reflection moment, and I hope you use it uh, the most and benefit from it the most. As an associated member, Latvia is pleased to welcome you all here in Riga within the framework of the EU Sharp Joint Action. This two-day event is hosted by our close colleagues and friends, State Emergency Medical Service, and of course it's supported by us, Ministry of Health of the Republic of Latvia. The focus of these two days will be on knowledge sharing, insight generated by, by the work package, six collaboration. And the overacting theme already as it was introduced is um, all hazards, intersectoral preparedness and response planning for serious cross border health threats. And here I can uh, relate to my introduction. I am not from medical field. I am completely different. My background is a lot of long years in public sector. And actually there is nothing I can agree more that collaboration is of utmost importance. And health sector plays such an important role in all the other sectors that sometimes we just have to inform more and highlight better this role. You also already mentioned effective collaboration and decisive communication between sectors can't be implemented overnight. It takes time, especially when emergency happens, there is no time and you have to act already and be prepared. We have all learned hands-on from the impact of recent cross-border crisis, COVID-19, the current war in Ukraine and the monkeypox epidemic. The multi-sectoral collaboration for public safety and protection is essential for efficient response to such threats. And once again, health sector cannot stand in isolation from all the other sectors. We need to ensure trust and foster broader cooperation across government, businesses, non-governmental institutions and society groups so that the action can be strong and we can work together and systems activated can be quickly implemented. But in order to gain the trust, you need to know somebody. And I thank this afternoon or this midday that you were so friendly introducing yourself to me that I really feel very welcome. And unfortunately, my colleague and I will have to go, but I heard that everything is going to be recorded and we will be following you online to hear new ideas and new insights. During these two days, you will hear a lot of interesting presentations from different countries, and it will provide you opportunity also to discuss broadly your experience in, um, in your own countries. And um, not only best practices regarding COVID-19, but other emergencies will be discussed and you will have to report on lessons learned. With the introduction of the serious, serious cross-border threats legislation now in place, it is the time to seize the opportunity to assess lessons learned, to meet our legal responsibility to integrate them into improved mechanisms that strengthen the multi-sectoral dimension of our preparedness. 
I would like to thank you all for contributing to this highly complex but essential task. Not only here in this event, but daily when you carry out your duties and share your experiences. Thank you so much for the attention and I hope that this whole workshop will be very insightful for you and prompt fruitful discussions in your home countries. And I see also that we have colleagues making already posts that uh, society could benefit at the end of the day from this two-day workshop. Thank you very much and enjoy two days in Rio.